With these shows going head to head, I'm I'm here to just tell you the facts, not mm. what's uh, funny or anything like that. With these shows going head to head, NXT picked up a ratings victory over Dynamite on Tuesday night. NXT nine hundred and twenty one thousand viewers, up seven point five percent, largest audience total since September twenty five, twenty nineteen, which was the second week they aired on USA. Dynamite did 609,000 on TBS, down 24% from last week. Lowest viewership told the show is done since June 18, 2021, when that episode was moved to Saturday due to NBA playoff coverage. By the way, isn't that, isn't that interesting that uh, when Dynamite was uh, moved to Saturday, which is the collision time slot, they in fact did collision numbers. Isn't that strange? Some of you will have absolutely no idea why that's strange, but we can worry about that later. NXT drew a point three at 18 to 49, up 37 percent, fourth highest rating in the history of the show, trailing only the first three weeks that they were on USA. Dynamite point two six at 18 to 49, that's down 7.1 percent from last week, lowest rating the show has done since June 28th. So what are the facts? Well, there are several facts. The first fact. As it NXT won the viewership. The second fact is that NXT won the demo. The third fact, stop me when I'm telling lies, is that AEW did a great number, all things considered. The other fact, fourth fact, I believe, now am I in four? AEW so. did a really good number, all things considered. You did wait. Is that the second time you said that? Is that that's three A and three B? You know the fifth fact is what's that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So congratulations to uh, to everybody. <laughs> hey, you know what? We got uh, what one point six million people combined watching these two shows. Hey, that's a victory. That's great. It all depends. Look, you can make numbers do anything. You can make numbers do anything, and there were. About 6 million people that were watching baseball, the Chicago-Detroit hockey game for opening night in the NHL, and college football. That was all going against these things as well. And that's true, and I'm sure they, they took some people there. But if you're looking at this from AEW's point of view, last week they had a .28 in the 18- to 49-year-old demographic. This week it was a .26. So they didn't fall all that far. Where they lost was their olds and their youngs. And this is where, if you want to take a lesson out of something, if you're AEW, the olds seem to love NXT. They're not going anywhere. So going head up against them, but they obviously don't have the same affinity for you. And WWE and NXT is doing well in people that are under the age of 18 years old. And that's where the biggest divide was. It was 525,000 people for NXT, and it was 263,000 for AEW. When you look at the other demographics, they're all relatively close to what AEW does on a regular basis anyway. Obviously, NXT certainly carved into that. But with that said... If you're really kind of looking at it from a pure numbers point of view, they didn't do all that bad. And where they've been lacking is there are places that they know they're lacking anyway. At least they should know they're lacking. Now, I do have some advice because I am a man who likes to offer advice, as you're all well aware. <laughs> to Austin Theory. Actually, no, it's not Austin Theory today. <laughs> if you spent the last 24 hours. Talking about how, well, now AEW might as well fold up shop and go out of business. Please take your phone, throw it in the trash can, and uh, and do something else. If you're going to sit here and go, oh, well, you know, they, they didn't really win. They had Undertaker and John Cena, blah, blah, blah. I want you to take your phone. I want you to throw it in the trash. And I want you to go to something else with your life. Because you know what? I don't like to make people mad, but the fact of the matter is, WWE brought out The Undertaker and John Cena and all of that because they could. If Tony Khan would have had the option to bring guys of that caliber onto his show, he would have. And in fact, as we found out on Wednesday, I mean, it was clear for a while that John Moxley was not going to be defending the title against Phoenix, and he still announced him on the show until 10 minutes before the show started. So the idea that only WWE would have done this, 
Like, if Tony Khan could have found a way to get The Undertaker, he'd have got The Undertaker for that show, and we all know that. So if your argument that it doesn't count, you should also throw your phone away. Now, one more. Oh, please. Do you remember the press conference when uh, Tony was all excited that he had a picture of Antonio Noki and, and Shabbat as a child on his phone? And he was so excited to show me that he threw, me my, he threw his phone to me. Do you remember that? Yes. yes. I should have kept it and went running. You, really? Because that's the biggest one Dude, you should talk about right listen. now. listen. <laughs> this guy needs to get off Twitter, okay? With all due respect. Now, I know some of you are going to defend this and go, well, you know, WWE. Listen, I have heard nothing. I have heard nothing but Tony needs to get off his phone and stop tweeting. And you know who I've heard that from? I have Who's not that? heard that from fans. I have heard that from people in WWE, but you know who I've heard it the most from? People in AEW. They're like, can somebody get this guy off of his phone? Get him off Twitter. That's from people in AEW. You know what he tweeted today? Well, first he had the... Well, I can't say the thing that he said the other day, but... He tweeted today, This week, two active, decades-long rating streaks from two great legends were ended. With all due respect... Until this week's head-to-head AEW on TBS versus WWE and USA, neither John Cena nor Undertaker had ever been on a WWE show with under 1 million total viewers and under 400,000 in the demo. Now listen, I will say this. I laughed, okay? I did laugh because that's like the, the gimmick on Twitter. It's like, you didn't get a million? You know, he's been hearing that for like a year now. And so I think that, you know... I think that he thought that this was funny, and it is funny, actually. But the problem is, there's a lot of people in his own company that don't think it's funny. This They're is not a good use of Chris Harrington. No. It's just not. No. To come up with numbers so. like that. And look, I was the one in the lead up to Tuesday. Look, I lived through the 90s. I lived through Don King and Bob Arum and the Goosen family and the Duva family and Rock Newman and all these other psychopaths that would just do anything to get you to pay attention to their show or their night or their person or whoever it is. So in a way, this was funny to me. The arms race that was going on, WWE wasn't tweeting like Tony, but that's how he was responding, and it was great. I was fine with it. After the number comes out, just go ahead and thank the fans that you went ahead and watched. And if you're doing this, this tells me that you really need to to really jump on the trails of WWE right now and to try to get attention that way. And I don't know if, if the day after, after these numbers come out, which you did lose by, you know, 230,000 people or whatever it is, like... Just go ahead. Thank your fans for watching. Thank them for their dedication on a night that was very tough with other things going on and keep it moving and then wait for the next appropriate time to lose your mind on Twitter. Now, I know he comes from a different era. He comes from right out of the message boards and all that sort of stuff. That's a life I didn't live. He's younger than me. He sees things differently. But this is one of those times where either practice restraint or Find somebody that's a member of your company that is willing to go out there and be your PR person and take those bullets. They're willing to be your house speaker, you know, to go out there and take that assault from people and to fire back at them and to come up with these crazy numbers. Get somebody else to do that because there is a fine line. There's a fine line. And he crosses it a lot for a lot of people and at some point well, he's going to embarrass himself publicly not meaning to like really badly here's here's the thing okay that, that a lot of people brought it to my attention here today like WWE has meetings saying don't 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 do stuff on Twitter and you know who else did meetings like that is AEW yeah like they yeah. they literally told the wrestlers like don't do this stuff on Twitter and now Tony is out here doing this stuff on Twitter so I think that my advice, if I were to give advice, is everybody get off Twitter and start working on your wrestling show because we got one coming up Friday, another one coming up Saturday. We got one coming up Friday for WWE, one coming up Monday and Tuesday. Like, let's all concentrate on our shows and let's have some great shows for these great fans. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.